So you're getting ready to start the new semester and are looking for digital note-taking apps that you can get on your iPad. Let's talk about my top free note-taking apps that I use on my iPad and that I highly recommend that you get for this semester as well. All right, so one of the main reasons why you might have gone with an iPad rather than another tablet or a laptop might be because of the Apple Pencil. Now there are just a few apps that take full advantage of the Apple Pencil, with one of them being the native iPad notes taking app, Apple Notes. Now aside from Apple Notes, another one that comes close is going to be Google Keep. These are two apps that I highly recommend if you are going to be using the Apple Pencil a lot. Both of these apps allow you to write down any notes with the Apple Pencil and also be able to go back and edit them if you need to. And not only that, but they also come with multiple utensils that you can use, including pens, markers, highlighters, and erasers. But by far the best feature, apart from the utensils, is going to be the ability to search through all of your written notes. Now, most of the other apps have that search feature, but these two free ones include searching through all of the written down notes, not just those that you have typed out. However, going back to the utensils, Google Keep doesn't allow for pixel erasing. Now what that means is that when you erase something on Google Keep, you are only going to be erasing the last stroke or whatever stroke you are going to erase for. Now as you can see here, if I write down a letter, each letter by letter, if I lift the pencil, it is going to erase that last letter or the letter that I'm going over. Whereas if I write a whole word, it's going to erase the whole word because it was all in one stroke. With pixel erasing, you can use it as a regular eraser. And as you go back and forth, you can go ahead and just erase chunks or parts of a letter or a word. Now, the other app that I'm going to recommend is going to be Evernote. This app has almost the same features as Apple Notes when it comes to pencil support, but it does not include that search feature. So without that search feature, I bumped it a little lower because there's always a time when you want to go back and look at your notes and it's always easier to just search for the concept or phrase rather than having to go and look through each one of your notes to find that exact place you are looking for. And the other note taking app I'm going to recommend is going to be Notion, but unfortunately that one does not include Apple Pencil support. It only uses it as a stylus. So you are able to type around, click around, and at the same time do written to speech or <laughs> written words into text but it will not allow you to write down. However, you can still import any images from any of the other note-taking services, but as I mentioned, those are going to be unsearchable and uneditable unless you go back to the other apps and then import an updated image. Now, searching through all of those images and files can be cumbersome, which is why I think file management is another great thing to have when it comes to digital note-taking. Now, luckily for you, all of these apps have great file management. They all do something a little bit different, but they all are great at keeping all of your notebooks and all of your notes organized. Google Keep and Apple Notes like to keep it basic by as soon as you go into the app, you're going to see all of your notes in a gallery type view. Now, this is where all of the notes are stacked into blocks where you can see the title of the notes and then also a little piece of the notes or a little bit of text or a little bit of written notes that is going to also display in kind of a thumbnail on top of the title of the note. Now, when it comes to grouping, Apple Notes does folders and Google Keep does tags. They both work the same way. You can go ahead and go into the sidebar and you'll see all of your groups, which can be for either a course or for a topic or for a chapter, whichever way you like to organize. And those can all be grouped together. Now, both of these also include a list view, but I honestly would not recommend it because you can't see all of your notes and it kind of cuts off most of the text. Now, Evernote goes a step further and groups them all into what they call notebooks. Now, obviously, when we go to school, we all have a separate notebook for each course. So Evernote does that well with making it seem like you have an actual notebook for each subject that you are going to go ahead and be taking. Now, similar to both Google Keep and Apple Notes, uh, the notebooks are just a grouping. So as soon as you go into the notebook, there are going to be multiple notes within that notebook and you can go ahead and search through those as well. 
Now Notion does go about this a little bit different by having just a sidebar that you can go ahead and cluster all of your information into a single tab. Now this is going to be basically like Google Keep and Apple Notes because you can click on one of the clusters and then you can choose what type of display you see. You can see a list, you can see a table, you can see the gallery, block view, or you really can decide on whatever you wanna see. But not only are you seeing notes, you can also include other files and just include them in a hyperlink rather than having a whole image just in your notebook. So as you can already see, a lot of these apps have a lot of features included into them but we are going to be looking at which one has the most extra features. And honestly, I think Notion is by far the best app for personal use. This app includes so many templates that you can use. They're all separated into little areas so you can go ahead and see whether you want it for design or for professional use or for personal goals or school or whatever. They have so many templates that you can choose from. And not only that, but they also allow you to embed other documents into your notes you can add images, you can go ahead and even add notes from your Google Drive onto Notion and from any of these other apps that you see here so that you can go ahead and keep everything organized in one single place. Not only that, but you can also add equations once you have a table, just like you would in Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, although the equations or functions that you have in Notion just aren't as great and vast as you would on those other two. Evernote is by far the most business professional looking one of all four of them. They have quite a bit of templates, although all these templates aren't very much student oriented. They have things like frequent flyer numbers, they have pre-call planners, and also interview scorecards. These are going to be more for the business professional, and they also include a dashboard but in order to customize your dashboard, you are going to have to upgrade to the premium version. It is also good to note that Evernote only allows you to sync your notes into two devices with the free version. And if you want up to three devices, you are going to have to upgrade as well to its premium version. Google Keep and Apple Notes are by far the least feature rich of all of them, but they do the scribble and they do the writing so well that I think they are going to be amazing for those that are going to constantly be using the Apple Pencil or you are going to be writing down all of your notes. So because you are a student, I'm guessing you're going to be needing that share feature in case you need any notes or any projects that you're going to need to collaborate with other students. Now, fortunately for you, all of these apps allow you to share your notes or share any project with another person. Now, Notion does have a cap of up to five collaborators with its free version, but for the pro version, which gives you unlimited collaborators, you can upgrade to it if you use your student email. So that there can be a barrier that is easily knocked down. And also with all three of the four apps, you're going to be able to sign in to them using your Gmail because it is integrated into Gmail. So this is great for when you're sharing it to other people, they can just sign in using Google and use their regular Gmail and be logged in. The only one that doesn't allow them to do this is Apple Notes because they require the person to sign into their iCloud or make an iCloud account to see and edit the notes. So let's go ahead and talk about what you can get with the free version on all these apps. Now all of these apps are luckily free to use, um, but if you do want extra features, like I mentioned, you are going to have to upgrade to the premium version on each of them. Now Apple Notes and Google Keep are completely free, but they do have a cap at the cloud a service that they each upload to. Google Keep allows you to upgrade to Google Drive, which for free you get 15 gigabytes. And for Apple and its iCloud, you're going to get five gigabytes for free to upload any of your documents. Now you have to keep in mind that if you have any other Apple devices, such as an iPhone or a MacBook or any of that, it does upload all of your photos, all of your files, your messages, and if you back up your devices for in case you lose it or you have to restore in your devices, that all also gets put into iCloud. So those five gigabytes might seem like a lot for documents, but once you start adding up everything else, it does get really small, really fast. Now, same thing with Google Keep and the Google Drive. 15 gigabytes seems like a lot, but I know a lot of us are using Google Photos to store any of the past memories and all of those Google Photos also use up those 15 gigabytes. You also have to keep in mind all the Google Sheets, Google Slides, Google Word Docs, anything like that 
all of that goes into those 15 gigabytes. Now, luckily, both of these services do offer upgrades for a very cheap price. Apple Notes or iCloud allows you to upgrade to 50 gigabytes of storage for just 99 cents a month. Now with Google Keep or Google Drive, you can upgrade to 100 gigabytes for just $1.99 a month. Evernote and Notion also have a cloud-based service that they use, but neither of them have a cap of total amount of storage. Notion does have a cap of five megabytes per file, so you won't be able to upload really hefty files into Notion. But like I mentioned before, if you do wanna upgrade, you can just use your student email to sign up and they go ahead and get rid of the cap and upgrade you to the pro version for free with your student email. Now Evernote does have a cap of 25 megabytes per file upload. So this is quite a bit larger than Notion's cap, but they also give you a cap of 60 megabytes per month. So they don't have a total amount of storage that you can keep, but you do have a limit as to how much you can upload per month. Now to upgrade Evernote, you're going to need to pay $7.99 for its premium version, but it does also allow you to do offline editing and also annotate PDFs. Now I highly recommend all of these four apps to use for digital note taking on your iPad. My personal verdict is going to be using Notion for all of my organization and planning and then I use Apple Notes for all of my note taking. I like using Apple Notes because like I said that Apple Pencil support is just amazing. Being able to write down any of my notes and then go back and edit them having that pixel eraser and then also being able to search through all of the written down notes is just amazing. And then Notion just has so many templates and tables and gallery displays and they just integrate with so many of the other services that it's just great to have that as my main organization because you can also add calendars, you can add budgets, you can just, you can add anything into Notion. So I use that as my main one for organization, keeping track of everything. And then I use Apple Notes to take down all of my written down notes. But that is my personal verdict and my personal combo that I use to take notes and keep myself organized. But I would like to know, is there any certain one that you use, any combination, or is there any single app that you recommend to do all of this in one single app? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed the content and subscribe to not miss any of my future videos and stay up to date on everything iPad and really anything tech related. I'll see you guys on the next one.